Hey, okay. Oof. That was touch and go there for a second. All right. I don't think uh, the internet can handle both music and a live stream. So we might just have a very echoey, chill um, live stream today. Um, you, my cursor is always disappearing on this laptop. And it looks like we're having maybe some lag problems. Um, Okie doke. This is definitely not my normal setup. As you can see, I'm in the studio today. Um, so, kind of had to make do with what I got. The uh, newly announced location for Art Force Iowa. We are in the historic firehouse, previously known as Social Club. Um, I also have a mustache. That's new. Um, I got bored. And now I have a mustache. Uh, here, wait. Can I do... Um... Anyway, how, do, how, how can I do this? Let's see. Hold on. Stand by. Um, image. There we go. Howdy, neighbor. Oh, wait. Other side. Ma'am. Anyway. <laughs> I might turn that back on later. Um, okay, so today, um, today we are going to be doing uh, a, a little bit of test prints. Now, this board isn't one hundred percent carved. It's probably it's like ninety percent. I didn't want to completely finish it because it is a commission piece, and there are a couple. I want to say like brand details, I guess, that I need to clarify before I completely finish it. Um, gorgeous, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, but here is the, what we got so far. Um, so this is what we were carving out last time. Uh, it took me forever, but I got all of that uh, hair detail carved out. Um, I left a little bit of the face, so we'll see how that is. Uh, so for these test prints, since I don't have it completely carved out, um, uh, I had said before I was going to do some prints on the t-shirts, but last minute change, I'm going to be printing with uh, water-based ink, which is definitely not my favorite, all the way around, or water-soluble ink anyway. I, when I print on any of my t-shirts or anything like that, I use my fancy pants uh, Gamblin inks. I really enjoy, uh, really, I really enjoy those. Well, look at the shirt. <laughs> yeah, you like those special effects? Here, I can, I can do it again while I'm doing my explanations. So, um, well, where'd it go? Hold on, I gotta take this hat off. There we go. Mm. So, I enjoy my fancy oil-based ink for when I am doing uh, my t-shirts. They are a, uh, they're highly pigmented, so the colors stay rich and dark. In this case, uh, it, the, all I have really is a black for right now. So this is my go-to. This is, this is why I guess my t-shirts end up, you know, look so good if I can toot my own horn. Um, and they stay that dark, the nice rich black for a long time. I've had some of my shirts for years, and they, they stay that way. <laughs> Yeehaw. Uh, so, 
uh, I guess we're gonna get started. Uh, I'm gonna try to flip in between a couple of different camera angles here so that you can see everything. <laughs> I'm gonna take off this cowboy hat so you can take me a little more seriously. Um, so let's see if that's like the same thing. Okay. Um, boop. So here's the press. This is what this is what I use to do my prints with. So uh, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but there is a big, big steel roller right here. There's a roller underneath of it, and this crank moves the bed through it. So what it does is just puts a ton of pressure and smashes the image into whatever I'm printing. That's all. Of course, it's adjustable. These things are not cheap. They're also not light. Um, so that's why uh, I have to be in the, the studio today instead of my, my house just because this is not going to fit in my place. <laughs> so let's get to it. Um, I'm going to start by inking up my board. Let's give you a better look at that. Boom. All right, so here's the board. This ink hasn't been opened in a long time. And I'm also like, uh, I have not printed in here since the move. So a couple of things I was looking for are still probably packed away somewhere. Um, definitely a lot of my supplies are still packed away at home. So I'm gonna have to make do with what we got. So I'm using a regular paint knife to do my uh, to to do my mixing. Normally I'd have like a nice like metal one, but hey, this is what I got. So this is what I'm gonna use. So I start out by putting the ink onto. I have like a thing of plastic right here, and then I just kind of mix it up, mix it up, just get the ink moving, loosen it up a little bit. Hello. Right, I'm cow, dude. Let me know if you can hear me all right. Uh, again, this is not my normal setup. Uh, it's not even on the same computer. So I had to kind of start from scratch and I had some problems because my setup is on a Windows computer. This is a Mac. And the options are not the same. All right, so this is looking all right. I'm going to put extra up top here. I'm gonna use this brayer. This is good stuff. Yeah, this is good stuff. Um, you know what? I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna need more ink. All right. Am I still lagging? Yeah, it's gone down a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take this, it's called a brayer. I'm gonna use it to roll up this ink. And a very important part of rolling up the ink is that it's nice and even. So I have a little bit extra on the side here, there too. I'm just going to pick up my brayer rather than just doing this over and over again, um, which just only inks up the same area over and over. I'm picking it up and moving it. Now I have way too much ink on this. So let's try spreading that back out. All right, it's looking a little bit better. Still might have a little extra. a little better if you can hear that almost sounds like uh, velcro and that's kind of what you're looking for 
You heard that, that Velcro sound and kind of like an orange peel texture. You can't really see it, the camera's so far away, but orange peel texture with your ink. So then, now that I got that all inked up, I'm going to come over here and, well, this is always the scary part because then you kind of see what you missed. <laughs> so, come over here and start spreading on the ink. So a very large part of, uh, so yeah, this image, the, the whole F on the beer can, that's going to go away for now, uh, just because I don't have anything carved out, which is fine. That's one of my, I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, it's not completely carved out yet, just because since it is a commission, I need to make sure on a couple things. So he's just going to be holding a black blob for right now. not too worried about inking up the outside area again this is just the first time first time inking it up there's a lot of troubleshooting to be done but this gives me a really really good idea on areas where I need to carve deeper or changes I need to make um, if something looks weird fix that up So one thing I, I couldn't decide on what to do was with, uh, with, with the mouth. We decided on stream, uh, people who joined us in the early streams, that's probably, geez, that's probably two weeks ago now, uh, that we wanted to open the mouth, and I did that, but now I can't decide if I want to keep like the inside of the mouth like really dark, or do some lines that suggest like, you know, a little bit of like medium light, something like that. But, all right, I'm just making sure my ink is nice and even all over the board. And I'll switch to the other camera so you can get a better look at what we got. Okay, all right. Um, boom. Okay, here we go. So, this is what we got so far. Let me just get rid of that other camera. Uh, is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Yep. There we go. So this is what we got. So you can see, like, the, the hair texture just repeated over and over again. Uh, is this stuff you do every time? Yes. So always with the first inking, you're always going to find all your problems. Uh, so I can see where I didn't carve maybe as deep as I needed to. I always like to leave a little bit of texture when I do my printing, but right here, especially, that's a lot. I, I need to get rid of that. So I will definitely do that uh, when I get a chance, but um, since I already have it inked up, I kind of just want to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to try to do a test print real quick. Uh, let me grab some paper. Sorry, it looks like they're doing some sort of construction outside. It's, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but. Laying my 
paper on top of an inked up board. I don't know if the pressure is right. It looks like it is not. So, you get to see the fun process of mixing that up. Um, let me move my thing out of the way a little bit. All right, there we go. Okay, so when you're adjusting your pressure on your press, you want to try to have it as even as possible. Now, luckily, there are these little meters on the side. Oh, what is it on this one? Yep, there it is. Meters on the side that help you with that. Uh, they're also placed on by hand, though, uh, wherever they make these. So they're not always 100% accurate. You have to use your press for a while to kind of get the feel about, okay, there is a one point, two point difference depending on where it is. So I'm gonna, I need to go ahead and lower this. And I'm just gonna make small adjustments on each side. Yeah, definitely light on the pressure, light on the ink, definitely needs more ink, which is what happens when you do it for the first time, the plate, some people say like the plate is thirsty, so you need to load it up with a lot of ink the first time, but here's what we got so far. Now here's the point where if I had any letters on here and I realized that I didn't carve them backwards and so they look backwards now, I'd yell and try to fill it up with as much wood putty as I could, fill out as I can, but uh, yeah, so far so good. So I think let's just keep on making adjustments and keep on trying. So I'm going to set this over here on the drying rack off camera. Take the plate back, put it on the table, reset the press. Ooh. There we go. Get me off track a little bit. There we go. All right, and we're back to square one. Yes. Let's go with this one. There we go. All right. So, like I said, uh, we have some changes that need to be made. We got a little bit too much ink where it doesn't need to be right here. So I'm going to go grab my carving tool. Also, just right off camera. Yeah. So I grabbed a couple of U-gouges, U-gouges um, being just like the scoops. So, and this is, it. it's a little difficult right now because uh, it's obviously all inked up. So just have to go in and start removing chunks. Uh, how can I do this so you can see it though? You know what? Um, I know I keep on going off camera. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to grab a bench plate. This is the tool that I was talking about that I've been using on my desk the other day. So this bench, um, bench plate. 
nice plate. What this does is it helps hold this in place, so it gives me a little bit of leverage, so it's a little bit easier to carve, and I don't have to get my hands in the way. Or in this case, get them all inky. But it looks like I'm going to get it inky anyway. <laughs> So I guess while I do this part, anybody have any questions about the printing process, carving process, anything, my mustache? My cowboy hat. Can get, uh, oh no, wait, which one did I have that on? There it is. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, there. Special effects. We we spare no expense here at Art Force Iowa to bring you the best live streams, partner. Looks like we got a little bit extra down by the hand. Yeehaw from Sean Murphy. Can we get some yeehaws in the chat, please? Look at all those yeehaws. We got a bunch of rootin' tootin' cowboys in the chat. All right, here we go. Uh, let's try another test print. Actually, you know what? Here, I'm gonna clean up a little bit under this branch. Okay, that happens. That's that's part of the printmaking process is getting ink everywhere. There we go.
when I was in college doing this, everyone, uh, like the teachers anyway, in the College of Design, when you would go to turn in assignments, and some of them would see that, like, you got black hands, or usually by the time you wash them, your fingernails are just outlined in black, and they're like, oh yeah, you're a printmaker. <laughs> or there's ink all over your assignment, you're a printmaker. Sorry. Okay. All right. So we're going to add a little bit more ink. I mentioned last time it was pretty, it was a little thin. So we'll increase the pressure, increase the ink. Hopefully, we can get something that looks pretty dang cool. Still feels a little thin, so even more ink. I should probably be using a smaller brayer for this too. Again, if you're, uh, well I guess if you didn't join us at the very beginning, this tool I'm using is called a brayer. It is used to transfer my ink from my palette here over to my image. And you know, I wasn't sure about the, the like the tree branch part of uh, the print. Uh, I was gonna carve out some texture into it, but I kind of like it just straight black. Good. Switch cameras. You know, I mean, look, how are we doing? We got how many people we got? We got like eight people. So that's we're not killing it like last week, but you know, that's still pretty good. Uh, let's see. Press. Boom. There we are. There's my butt hanging out in the camera. It was a family stream. All right. So. We have to play it again. I carved the, or this area was full up with ink, so I carved it deeper so the brayer doesn't have a chance to hit it um, while I'm going over the raised surfaces. Still got some shallow areas that need touched up on, but that was the big one where it's clumping up right there. Um, I, again, I like to leave a little bit of that texture in, but there can be too much for sure. It, it can make the image too busy. So, but let's see. Paper. Paper, paper, paper.
pressure, too much ink. So, again, troubleshooting. We can see that a lot of the, the fur detail is filled in. Um, I'm not sure you can see it on camera, but it's like, that ink is really piled up on there. So, I might run another print through there just to get out all that extra ink. Um, and then we'll make adjustments. so much ink on there that the second run through is almost a perfect print then. <laughs> So I've been showing you how to print with a big, fancy, expensive press. Um, they are definitely useful, especially, uh, I wish the words in my head just right on camera. They are definitely useful. <laughs> they gotta be because of how much they cost. But uh, yeah, in order to get like where I print my t-shirts, I need that super heavy pressure to be able to really snap that image into the fabric. Um, but if you're just doing paper prints or just like simple prints at home, you can use uh, something like this. This is a plastic barrel. So with this, it has a handle on it and you just rip it like that and your hand becomes the press. So you're just pushing hard down onto your image and just going all the way around it. So you could even do this at home. I know you all got time. We all got time right now. Most of us got time. I shouldn't say all. Now, I've printed this twice already, so this image is not going to look super amazing. <laughs> Something like this, this would be called a ghost image. A uh, ghost image is where you're really just doing that just to get out that extra ink that you put into the put into the plate. Also handy for cleaning up at the end so you don't have a bunch of extra ink sitting on it. Carving. 
Okay. So something like this, where I have a whole lot of small texture, um, it is really important that since I did use too much ink and it filled in some of those gaps, uh, that I get those cleaned out when I'm done. Otherwise, the ink will dry inside of those and then I'll essentially just have to re-carve -car it, like carve out the ink that dried in the plate. Now this ink I'm using right now, it's not my normal, not what I normally use, and I can feel it drying up already. Normally with oil base, you know, that stuff takes days, weeks, even to dry. Boom, there it is. Okay. Let's give her another shot. Look back to the press. There it is. Look at that. There's that press. And again, if anyone in the chat, anyone watching has any questions, um, feel free to ask. If you've been making art with us along, or if you're making art along with us, if there are any of these Artful Connection streams, uh, we'd love to see it. Please send it to the Art Source Facebook page. Um, and yeah, we just, we're excited to make art with the community. Community being you. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Doesn't have to be a wood carving. I realize that maybe not everyone has access to wood carving tools at home. Um, it might not be the most essential Please send it our, our way. We love seeing it. Also, if you've been following me every Friday, every Friday lunchtime, uh, as I've been carving this plate, thank you for joining me that long. Especially if you were here last time. Mexican restaurant stream. That was fun. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to give it a tiny bit less, tiny bit less pressure. I think we were actually just about where we need to be. This is just newsprint. Um, it's great for just kind of proofing or just seeing where your image is at. Hey, all right, that's looking better. Now the paper jumped a little bit, but that's okay. Yes, does that show up all right? Plugs in the way, we'll get the lighter stuff. looking pretty good for texture things in there it's still a little filled in from when I over inked it but just repeated prints will get that out but overall I'm pretty happy with how he's looking he's very excited to have that ring now one detail that no one mentioned in any of the streams and 
I wish you all would have, was when I was originally carving it. Looks great. Thanks, Drew. When I was originally carving it, I had totally forgotten. Let's get this right here. Let me tilt the camera so I want to see my mustache. I had only placed one part of his tail. I didn't I didn't draw the rest of it where it wrapped around. And I didn't realize it until I almost had all of that tree branch carved out. And so I was just kind of kicking myself. I'm like, great, now how am I gonna do this? So if so this is a little secret for the people who are watching. Um, if you look, the uh, the the tree branch it gets progressively thinner as it goes down the branch because I had to use some of what was left over from the branch to create uh, the rest of the tail texture on there. So, again, troubleshooting, very important for, <laughs> for print making. being said, I'm going to switch to, whoa, what happened to my thing? Here it goes. Boom. Uh, I'm going to switch this, and I am going to uh, make some little tweaks to the, uh, I mentioned the, the little details. Um, the details kind of got filled up, so I'm going to work on trying to clean those back out. I'm a little closer to the chat now. Anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, food they want to send my way? stressed out about making this thing happen for today so last night I stayed up all night making sure it was exactly where I needed to be <laughs> um, and I have not exactly stopped for food yet so How are we doing on time? What's the time? We got about 15 minutes left. All right. Um, tell you what, how many people we got in here? Five. If we can get it back up to, let's just do 10. If we can get 10 more people in here, I will finish up with the, uh, the cowboy hat special effect that I started the stream with.
So you can't see it. I'm just using this really tiny, it's almost like a knife, this flat thing here. Um, and then my towel just to, just to get that extra ink out of there. So it doesn't dry it up and dry up and clog. What also is really good uh, for cleanup like this, especially if you're using oil-based inks. Um, if you're using oil-based ink, the best thing, one of the best things you can use is a toothbrush. Toothbrush, cover it in uh, vegetable oil and scrub away at your plate. Um, I guess that's one thing I could talk about cleanup uh, since I'm not really going to do it on stream. But cleanup, cleanup is kind of a pain, <laughs> especially if you use oil base because a, a lot of the stuff that you need to use uh, or that you can use has chemicals that are not so great for your body. So I'm using water soluble oil ink, which is kind of a weird hybrid. So this one will be pretty easy. I just got to use water to clean it up. But normally what I use to clean up my tools and my palette and everything is actually just vegetable oil, just plain, cheap, whatever vegetable oil. Um, since it's oil, since the ink itself is oil based, uh, the vegetable oil just helps thin it out and get it out of your image and uh, off your tools and everything. Um, now I will treat my tools with uh, a Gamsol, which is like a, maybe like a safer alternative to odorless mineral spirits so that I just don't have a bunch of vegetable oil on it, but, but uh, no, you know, it, you know, art can be pretty toxic at times. Uh, a lot of artists are at risk for um, cancer, just working with the materials that they work with if they're not careful. I know one thing that I use, if I need my prints to dry faster, I use a, a cobalt dryer. Um, I don't like using that on my fabrics just because I, I really don't like the material, but cobalt is a heavy metal, which is very, very toxic to the body. Um, I only absolutely use that if I am running very late for a like show, got to submit something and it's not going to be dry in time because again, these things can take up to you know a couple weeks to dry uh, if there is no dryer included in them. All right. Looking pretty good again. Maybe I can try to get one more print out of this just to see how well I cleaned this up. So next Friday, be back at it again. Um, I have two thing, two projects that I really want to work on. One is what probably all or most artists are doing right now is a response to the whole uh, COVID nineteen coronavirus situation. And I was going to make some art that. I don't know, I always add humor to things, so it would be kind of not poking fun at it, but just like looking at it through maybe a more just humorous light. Um, not to say that this situation isn't extremely serious, so please, please be safe, be healthy.
be awesome. And stay awesome. All right, yep. Let's try. Let's try one more print out of this thing before I leave it. So, oh, I didn't even finish what I was talking about. So, either this, uh, or the uh, the the new design about the virus, or my hats. I've been working on hats for the longest time. Hats are just like trying to wrap my head around how it needs to be done is just. It's been driving me nuts because hats aren't exactly flat. It's not going to fit through the press. This thing's pretty much dry. Probably not going to get a great print out of this. Um, it's not going to fit through the press normally, so I got to figure out. I want to print like on the brim or maybe on some fabric that then I could uh, stitch onto the hats, but we'll see. It is getting pretty thin, and I don't want to get any more ink out here. I'm so close to the end. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Let's give it a shot. See what happens. Switch to press cam. Press cam. Boom. Accepted into a show is actually near Des Moines at the Modular Muse. And I thought, just as a fun, free gift for people, that I would make uh, coasters that people could put their drinks on. Being at the Modular Muse, it's just like a music venue and bar, kind of. So I printed it with water based ink. I did a, a nice dual tone print. Um, dual tone meaning that it's just two different colors that uh, I rolled up on my sprayer and they just blended together as I rolled it onto the uh, onto the plate. So it was like a, it was a blend from like orange to black. And it was no, it looked cool. Uh, printed it with water based ink. And they came out okay. They were it was a free coaster so I wasn't too worried about the quality. I printed the five second, but it dries so quick so it's not a problem. Well, come to find out, um, water-based ink, yeah, yeah, kind of figured how I thought it would be. That's okay, though. I know that I did get one good print out of it, so I know that the image is looking good. This is all just inking problems now, and that's just the process of ink itself. Uh, I use much higher quality ink. Coasters, the coasters. I printed all the coasters. They have this water soluble ink, water based ink. And turns out when people put their drinks on coasters that are printed on water based ink, the ink reactivates. And it was starting to get ink all over the bar. And as soon as I realized what happened, I was like, no, no, let's give me all these coasters back. Don't use them. I didn't want to get any, I didn't want to like ruin anyone's clothes or mess up the bar or anything like that. So, lesson to you, if you're going to print on something that's going to get wet, don't use water-based ink. It becomes, it reactivates the water. <laughs> so, 
So, all right. I think I'm down to the last few minutes. Um, switch back to my face. So if you weren't here at the beginning of the stream, I've been using uh, Blick Water Soluble Block Printing Ink. Not my favorite. <laughs> I'm doing the, the makeup tutorial. I'm using the black water soluble ink. I will always 100% suggest oil based. I use Gamblin. Gamblin is my favorite. Uh, super high quality. It holds up over time, unlike this that's starting to dry out. Um, yes, can't suggest it enough. Gamblin. Or just any, or just. Oil based in general. Don't use water soluble. Don't use water based. You can if it's just like an at home craft. Sure. Uh, I had, uh, when I was in this, so like first getting into this, I had my cousin at the time. He was very young and he was carving out like little rubber. Oh, that's so crooked. Uh, he was carving out like little rubber, uh, like uh, almost erasers into like stamps and he was using water soluble ink. And it's great. It's great if you're just starting out. It's awesome. So, I, I shouldn't say don't use it. Use it if you're interested in it and you want to like, you know, dip your toes in the water and see how it is. But if you want the best of the best, get oil-based gambling ink. And I think that just about does it here. I know we didn't quit, get quite back up to 10, but thank you everyone who came. I. I, uh, oh, that was way too big. Yep. There we go. What side is it? Yep. So I, I tip my hat to you. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, I hope you join me or any of our great artist mentors next week from 1130 to 1230. We do this every weekday. So please join us, create art with us, show us what you're creating. We'd always love to see it. And you all have a wonderful Friday, wonderful weekend. And yes. Um, now, uh, thank you, Amy. Now I'm just gonna stall until I can find the end stream button. Goodbye.